Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at a really simple way to paint some salamanders space marines for our 40k armies. To start with I just wanted to show you a small sub assembly that I've used uh, with this marine. I haven't glued the left arm in so I can remove this weapon if I need to uh, and I've given the whole model a coat of Vallejo Game Air Black through the airbrush uh, just to give me a nice base to work from. The first step is to actually highlight the areas that I'm going to leave black on the model. So in this case, the head and the shoulder pads. And to do this, I'm using Vallejo Model Air Dark Sea Grey, and I've diluted it slightly less than 50-50, so a tiny bit more paint than thinner. And I'm spraying 20 PSI. Just thinking about my light source from the top right as we look at it, and just catching the tops of those parts. Just make sure that the highlight matches the shape. Now I've removed the head here. I'd only blue tack that in as well. And I've masked the shoulders. Um, you can use whatever masking uh, medium you like, masking putty or masking fluid, whatever. This is my favorite uh, camouflage masking putty by MIG. Now I'm gonna do the pre-shade on the rest of the armor so what i want green so again i'm thinking about that light coming in from the right hand side as we look at it and making sure we draw lots of focus into the area around the head that focal point so i'm using very thinned tamiya flat white here xf2 acrylic all the tamias we use are acrylic unless we see otherwise uh, and i've used the tamiya x28 thinner to thin this with and i've probably thinned this i don't know around four or five drops of thinner to paint at least much better to air on the side of too thin and build up the layers. And this is obviously really sped up, but you see as I'm working my way around by applying these really thin layers of the white, I can create a gray over the black, and then I can go up to pure white by continuing to go over certain areas that I want to highlight further. And all the time I'm just thinking about where my light source is coming from, and making sure it matches up across the miniature. So on the back of the model, it's coming from the right hand side as we look at it, and from the front of the model, it's coming from the right hand side as we look at it the right hand side and slightly above as well and there'll always be that overall light from above. Now over that pre-shade I'm going to start with a GW Warp Lightning contrast paint and I've thinned this between two and three drops of thinner to one drop of contrast paint and I've just used my normal life color thinner that I'm using at the moment but the Leo thinner and any airbrush thinner is going to work absolutely fine. And I'm slowly going to build up the layers of colour over our pre-shade or our grayscale, we might hear it called. And you can see that by that having that shadow and that light and that mid-tone underneath and using these thinned contrast paints, which are a very translucent paint, so as in they're very see-through, we can build the layers up and still see loads of that shadow and that light that we've left underneath. Now contrast paint dries quite a lot darker a more solid or opaque so it's always worth when you've finished going around once either pop a hair dryer on it or use the air from your airbrush to dry it just let it sit for a minute or so and see is that dark enough for me and then if not you can always touch it up you can see already these lovely saturated contrast paints behave a lot like inks to be honest and straight away we've got a pretty rag color now I took the arm off so I could get to the bits underneath. Um, it's not so important because they're going to be hidden, but what it has highlighted here is that the gun has made, I meant I've got this very strange uh, blocking effect on the knee. Um, that's not the same as if it was a scale model and the gun was casting a shadow down on the knee. That's not what's happened here. It's just the piece of plastic's physically blocked the other piece of plastic. So that shadow doesn't make any sense. And all I need to do now is just grab my Tamiya white again. I can spray straight over the top and then go back in with my warp lightning and spray over that white. You can always go backwards and forwards with your uh, pre-shade and your pre-highlight if you go too heavy with your colors or you make a mistake like this. So now we're looking pretty good. I'm not gonna worry too much about that dark area on the chest because the gun uh, really does sit flush up against that so you're never gonna see it. But now I wanna get a little bit more color into the shadow parts of the model. I don't just wanna leave it the green straight over the black because this desaturates it, it's not very nice. So I've taken a darker uh, contrast paint green here, in this case orc flesh, 
and I'm spraying this into the shadows, but I'm also spraying it in any of the areas where we perhaps have a slightly strong uh, or rather quick fade from dark into light, so that the mid-tone areas. And if any of these I want to blend slightly more, then I'll make sure that I get some of that orc flesh into that area as well. I've taken off the uh, masking putty here. You can see I wasn't too good on that right shoulder pad. I've got a couple of little patches. I'll just do some battle damage on that later. And now I give the whole model a couple of coats of Vallejo polyurethane gloss varnish, thinned about two to one with thinner. That's in preparation for this stage. So here I'm going to create an oil wash using Winsor & Newton Artist Oil Color Lamp Black and Winsor & Newton Sansador Thinner. Mix them together. And I can always check what the mix is like on the edge of the little metal dish. So it's not quite strong enough. So you can see I've still got a blob of the oil left in there that I haven't mixed in. So I'll mix a little bit more of that in. And that's more like it. Now we just go around the model and pin wash. And we've done a whole video dedicated to this technique. So check that out in the link. Here you can see, once that was dried, and I've applied the decals as well, again check out our video dedicated to the decals, I've given the whole model two coats of Ammo by MIG Ultra Matte Varnish. I think it's given it a really, really nice finish. So let's move on to the rest of the model now. I'm not going to bother edge highlighting the green, but I do think the black areas will benefit from a little bit of it. So I've got here a Vallejo Model Color Dark Grey. I'm just going to do a little bit of edge highlighting, not all the way around, but just on those bits that will catch the light. So if the light's coming from that right hand side in the top, I'm going to highlight the top edges and those edges facing the right hand side. Just got a nice smudge on there, so I'll have to battle damage that one out later as well. They're quite cool, these um, Gravis armor models. They've got some nice, nice bits to paint on them. And now I'm just going to do one further edge highlight using uh, the Leo model color French Mirage Blue. And this is on all the black parts, so the weapon, the helmet, the connective parts of the armor, anything like that, just gone around and done the same highlight colors. With the army painting, it's putting the effort in where you're going to have the most impact. So just a little bit of edge highlighting here and there is going to give us quite a bit of punch. For the gold parts of the model, I'm going to base coat them in scale 75 decayed metal. It's a lovely metallic brown color and I use it as the base paint for nearly all my golds, bronzes, coppers, uh, brass colors, all sorts of things like that. This really is a paint I'd, I'd recommend picking up if you can get hold of it. And I'm going to highlight that with GW Retributor Gold. Again, a really nice sort of classic gold color. Um, I've gone a little bit heavy on that first highlight because I was only really wanting just to catch the edges. So what I will do is go back in with a little bit of decayed metal and just get the uh, paint the recess back in. Gives us a bit more definition. And then all over, I'm going to give it a very watered down wash of GW Drucci Violet. So a purple wash, doesn't have to be Drucci Violet, can be whatever brand you want, uh, but a purple wash. The purple will just give us a nice little bit of contrast against the green. It'll be quite subtle, um, but it's nice to use the color theory where we can. For the silver metal parts of the model, uh, I've decided to use Scale 75 Black Metal. It's a really lovely color. It's sort of got a blue sheen to it, uh, this silver. Uh, and I thought it would work really nicely against uh, this quite bright green. I think the whole model's quite uh, bright, quite saturated, so we might as well lean into that and enjoy it. Um, doesn't mean it has to look cartoony or anything like that, um, but it means we can maybe just be a bit, bit more bold with our colors. Uh, and here I'm just using the same uh, oil mix, the oil wash mix that we used earlier. Uh, if you come back to this the next day, just put a few more drops of thinner in, mix it up, and, and you'll be good to go. This is just washed straight over the acrylic paint. As long as it's dry, you don't need to worry about varnishing it or anything like that. As long as that silver paint's dry, you won't have any problems. For the eye lenses, going against my usual rule here that red red lenses are for baddies, because um, it's just going to look so good on these uh, these green armor dudes. So I've base coated it with uh, GW Barrack Burgundy. 
Then I do my first highlight. So this is towards the center of each eye and along the bottom of the lens. Paint was a little bit too dry there. I should have thinned it out a touch more on my palette. It would have come off the brush easier. And then a final highlight, smaller area this time using GW Fire Dragon Bright, again towards the center and along the bottom. And then finally, a little white dot in the outside upper corners of the lenses using uh, any white paint you like. I, I like the Leo model color white. And again, the time we've saved on being able to airbrush that armor lets us spend a bit more time on things like lenses, which is what's going to elevate uh, the look of the model. To highlight the silver parts of the model, I'm going to stick with that slightly blue uh, tinge theme. Uh, and I'm going to use GW Grey Knight Steel. And just like with the black, I'm not going to highlight all the edges, just the top ones and the ones facing the light. And then because the Drucci Violet's really dulled the gold back down, I'm just going to do a couple of tiny little more highlights with the Retributor Gold again. Now for the weird sort of power cell things, whatever they are, on this melter type weapon, I've gone back to my scale 75 decayed metal, so my sort of metallic brown base paint. And just give those a nice smooth coat of that. Usually takes about two coats with the decayed metal. I'm going to highlight that with GW Screaming Bell, this lovely pinky copper colour. Exactly the same way as I've edge highlighted all the other types of things. And then to make that a little bit more interesting, I've got very, very watered down GW Cyberite Green, and I'm just going to wash that into the recesses to create a sort of bit of verdigris or tarnishing or corrosion, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Just makes it look cool and weird tech. Um, but any watered down turquoise uh, or very light sort of turquoise paint will do for this. I probably applied. I don't know, two or three coats of that. Now for the end of the melter weapon, uh, I'm going to dry brush on some silver. So in this case, lead belcher, because it's what I had to hand. And I'm dry brushing it on just so I can leave those little um, gaps in the end of the, the gun black. I haven't got to go back in and wash them and fill them or anything like that. And then using my airbrush, I've got Trucci Violet in here, neat. I haven't thinned it or anything, just straight in the airbrush. And now what I'm going to do is spray almost completely off the end of the tip of the gum. So sort of, if you look on my glove, you can see most of the paint's going on there. Or if you look on the card here, you'll see it spraying onto the card. I'm just catching the end of the gun with the bottom edge of the cone of paint that's coming out of the airbrush. And I keep bringing that down towards the tip of the gum so it builds up and it gets thicker and thicker. And we start to get this nice fade. Uh, if you do build up too much in one area, just let it dry before moving on. You don't want to blow that uh, sort of pool around. And you can see it's given this sort of nice discoloration to the end of the melter weapon. And then just to char the tip of that, very tip of that melter weapon, uh, here I've used Contrast Black Templar, because that neat in again, but you could use Nuln Oil, you could use very, very thin black paint, really doesn't matter. We're just trying to catch the very tip of the weapon here. And if you don't have an airbrush, you could always do this with a hairy brush, or you could just dry brush it on. I wanted to do a tiny bit of battle damage, just because I always like to have a little bit of battle damage on there. I'm going to use Rhinox Hide for this. Um, it's a real go-to uh, for me for, for, for chipping, and it works so nicely on this green armour. So just work away around. Think of the areas that are going to get the most damage. Just put a few little chips in here and there. Just helps tell a bit more of a story on the model. And then with my lead belcher again, just any of those chips that were on, say, an exposed edge. So like his knuckles, things like that. Just going to put a tiny bit of lead belcher on. And I've almost, it's almost like a dry brush, my brush here. There's very little paint on it. Um, so I don't need to worry about smearing it all over the model or anything like that. It shows up great on the black as well. So do a few little stippled sort of chips on there for that. But as I said, I didn't want to go over the top with the battle damage on this chap. So I've popped him on his base. Uh, and again, we've got a tutorial all about how we create these bases. Uh, so if you want to go and check that out, super simple. Uh, I think it shows the models off really nicely, this color on it in particular. I hope you've enjoyed the techniques and the recipes I've shown on this guy. 
He really was a, a fun model to paint. I usually paint a lot of the basic troop types for these videos, but it was it was good fun to do a slightly different one on this, and I was pleased I was able to show perhaps a few more fun techniques uh, on the weapon there as well. If you enjoy those slightly more um, involved techniques like the, the discoloration on the weapon, that sort of thing, those are the things we cover on a lot of our Patreon articles, whether that's videos uh, or PDFs, and we'll dedicate an awful lot of time to, to very specific techniques. So if you do fancy sort of pushing your painting on a bit more or, or seeing what our take on that is like, then check out the Patreon and uh, we'd be glad to have you. We've had a lot of Marines recently, so I think next week it'll be time to have a look at their arch nemeses at the moment, and I think we need to paint some weird undead Egyptian space robot looking dudes. So if you've enjoyed the video, then hit the like button, and if you want to help us out, then hit subscribe as well, and I'll see you next time.